25 summers. Like the content, subscribe to the page. Um, what are misbehavior reports in prison? Explain to us, please. A misbehavior report is something that occurs whenever you in fault of committing one of the violations. It's like being written up for something you've done wrong in a three-tier system. Tier one is the easier the infraction. Usually nothing is done in this position. Tier two is almost a serious offense. The tier three is the most serious offense of all the tier three system. So a misbehavior report is an infraction. If you're written up for something that you did wrong, you're going to have a misbehavior hearing. At the conclusion of a hearing, they're going to let you know whether you're doing SHU time, special housing unit, key block time, loss of privileges, loss of packages, loss of anything like that. This can happen by getting a misbehavior report. Um, were inmates allowed to get food packages sent from home um, in the prison and other parts of the country? They call them like holiday boxes, even though they get them a couple times a year, like where they're allowed to get food from home or from a company. Does that take place? Yeah, exactly. And you can order, you can order unlimited packages from a food vendor but you're only allowed to get two packages a year from home. And they usually designated for your birthday or holiday, such as Christmas or New Year's or something like that. But they two twenty dollar two twenty pound packages. And you can only get two because New York state system has allowed the inmates to have TVs in their cell. And once they gave you the TVs, they shortened the packages that you could receive. So they shorten the package, the contents in the package because the TV weighed more. So is it based on weight or is it just that they gave y'all TV so they took away other stuff? That's basically what they did, man, because it didn't have anything to do with the weight because the TVs only weighed a few 20, 10 pounds, 15 pounds. What it is is that they feel if they give you something equally, they must take something away. It's because it's not a situation of making a prisoner comfortable in his stay in prison. It's always to make you uncomfortable and keep you off balance. So to keep giving, giving, giving you is almost like no lesson to be learned to be locked up. So once they give you something, they'll take something away. Before the TVs came, you can get 35 pound package from home from your loved ones every month. Once the TVs came, they broke it to two. You can only get two packages a year and they only 20 pounds in succession. And now you get one for your birthday and one for this, uh, a picked holiday. So what are some of the things that you were allowed to get in your packages? And what, what are the things you were not allowed to get sent from home? The colors. The colors never changed. There was no black, blue, orange, or gray. Those colors you was not allowed to have in a facility. Any other color outside of that, you can receive your shirts. You can receive your towels, you can receive things like that. You get canned foods, you can get tuna fish, you can get uh, canned fruits, you can get uh, basically anything that comes in a can, you know, you can have. You're not gonna get a big, humongous size can because you'll be fooled to get a big 35, 20 pound can of peanut butter when that's gonna be 20 pounds in your package. So you smaller the cans, the more cans you get. And that's when they was given 35 pounds a month. Now, if you're only getting 220 a, a year, then you got to really be trying to get small cans so you can get a lot of things in your package, you know, because if you do the math, 20 pounds of food is not a lot of food. Okay, and that's only allowed to happen two times a year. Two times a year, yeah. Okay, so how does the commissary process work? How often is that? Um... You, get, you get to go to commissary once every two weeks. They allow you in New York State to spend $55 in food items, you're allowed to spend $25 in stamps and special item tickets. Special item tickets is like buying Click Click to take photos, uh, purchasing a ticket for you and your family member to go on a festival. Those are special item tickets. So together, your buy cannot exceed $75. What do you mean by festivals? What festivals? They have festivals. They have festivals and the facilities put on by the organizations where your family can join 
and you can go down there and have a picnic and eat some decent food and listen to a little music and enjoy the festivities. It could be shows being put on. It could be a festival. You can have uh, M.A. bands playing for you. You may have a few singers. You may have a few guest speakers from the outside, but it's a festival, a time where you get together with your family outside of the visit room and enjoy each other's company for the course of that day. Who's in charge of the commissary process? Who's in charge of the guards, the inmates, civilians outside people? Civilians and, and correction officers. Civilians that sell y'all the commissary items or civilians that work in the prison? They work in the prison. They work in the prison and like they basically glorify cashiers, you know? They ringing up and adding up your, your items and they deducting the money from your from from your uh, inmate account. Would you say commissary time of the month is a little dangerous because maybe people owe people or people are getting robbed or extorted? Would you say that time is a little bit more? Yeah, it's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. This is when infractions, the misbehavior reports are written. This is when a lot of robberies is committed. This is when extortion is at its highest peak or uh, during commissary time. Like I say. You get to go make one buy once every two weeks. And there's a lot of inmates in there that don't have nothing, don't have money to buy a commissary. So they prying on the ones who they feel that they can get over on and either steal, manipulate them, con them, befriend them, friendly extort them out of whatever you know they feel they can get out of them because they have nothing. Have you ever been housed with a person you had a beef with? Yeah. If so, how did it play out? Yeah. Was I, it a cellmate? Was it in a dorm? Was it a two-man cell? What was it? Yeah, I was actually in a, in a double bunk situation where they actually put a uh, inmate in the cell with me who was an enemy of mine. And like I said, it goes down. It gets down and you got to fight to the end. There's no screaming for the help for officers or none of that, man. You in stereo. Everybody can hear you. So if you're in a situation like that, you have to address the situation accordingly, man. You have to get busy. You have to get down from your crown. Situations like that ch shows you the boys from the men, man, because I done heard plenty of people screaming, help me, get me out the cell. Yo, he's stabbing me. He's doing that. Yo, I'd rather save the energy and all of that, man, and doing what he's doing to me, doing it back to him, man, before I call for any help or anything. So they put a dude in a, in a predicament with me like that. Leaders to say, Thank God I didn't get another new bid for that one, man. But yeah, the cell was in complete ruins. It was blood everywhere. And uh, we both had to go to the infirmary. And like I said, it's a fight to the death until the officer realizes something going on in one of the cells, one of the prisoners up front. I holler to the officers, yo, it's a fight going on in the cell. And they'll take their sweet time to get down there. By that time, man, you locked in the cell with the guy, man. Y'all only in a space. It's only seven feet by five feet, man. So you can imagine what type of damage you two going to inflict upon each other. In a, in a matter of three to five minutes, it's going to take the officer to respond, to get in there and break up a situation. After that one incident there, man, they deemed me undouble bunkable, man, for the rest of my term in prison. Twenty five summers. If a known snitch a rat comes to prison, will they be protected if they able to get drugs in or contraband? Will they be protected by people even though they are known snitch or a rat? Yeah, absolutely, man. That type of thing is happening right now as we speak. If a dude comes in, he could be soft as baby. He could be soft as a baby as he but long as he's able to produce one of the, the, the major needs in the penitentiary, heroin, marijuana, cocaine, yeah, he's going to be protected by all the wolves, all the thugs, all of them, until they can't use him up no more, then they'll kick him out and they'll throw him to the wolves. But yes, yeah, soon as he come in, off the back, they protect him. No matter who they snitched on, they could have snitched on their own mothers, it didn't matter. As long as they producing this and giving this up, this this in demand, to these so-called wolves, which we call creeps, yeah, they once they get their hands on something they feel like it's golden, they got the golden goose, man, they'll protect that to the end of the day, they'll ride that to the grave. Okay, um, how common is attacks on guards 
CEOs of prison staff? Like, how common is that? Is it is it rare? Is it's, it daily, like, inmate-to-inmate inmate fights? Or yeah. how does that work? No, it's common in Rikers Island. It's common down there. It's not common like that upstate. Uh, 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 inmate, I uh, know that uh, attack on an officer upstate can lead to a lot of things, and a lot of things, and all of them are no good. It's new time in, imposed, new bids, new felonies, let alone the ass whipping, you know. So, nah, it's not happening that often up north. <laughs> Excuse me. So, it's more so on Rikers Island. Why, why would you say that? Because people on Rikers Island are not technically in prison yet. So it's right. maybe more of the people that know they're going to prison. Mm -hmm. So they're acting like that. I know it's not people that are waiting to get bailed out for $2,000 assaulting officers. Or is it like It that? is like that in a lot of cases. You know why? Because once you come up under this banner, these gang banners, man, you, you're putting predicaments to do things that normally under new, new, normal circumstances, you wouldn't even do it. But since you didn't want to be a man and stand on your own two feet and decided to join these cliques and organizations by way of gangs, they put you in these situations where you have to perform. And performing meaning you have to jump on somebody, you have to jump on a guard, you have to do something. See, the smart person knows that they'll know if you're already sentenced. When you upstate in the New York State penitentiary system, you're already sentenced to the time you're going to get and all of that. It's only an idiot that want to do something to get more time, not knowingly or willingly do something that's going to get them more time, opposed to Rikers Island. Rikers Island, these are cases of pending. These are people that are going back and forth through the court system. These are some people that have a $2,000 bail. They're in there for grand larceny and everything. But once again, once he comes through and he joins these gangs, these, these so-called leaders are putting them through the test they making them put in work. They making them do things to people that they wouldn't do just to prove themselves worthy of being in the gang. And these guys are doing this down there. And a lot of them is jumping on the officers, cutting the officers, jumping on them, beating them up, man. You know, you see how it's going on, man. You see Rikers Island's under heavy scrutiny by the federal government because it's what else they're going to do. The gang thing is running so rampant down there, man. They have to protect themselves as the same way as protect you from hurting yourself and hurting others. So they being put in a current a predicament down there where they either getting assaulted or they're going to be doing the assault on the inmates. And then they may do the assault on the inmates. It's never look good. It looks like brutality. But whatever the inmate does it to one of them, it just looks like there's an unhappy inmate on campus. But, you know, this is how it goes, man. These are the balance and checks, man. But a lot of this assault. It's happening down there. It's happening in Rikers Island. A lot of that's not taking place upstate.